Hello again, wherever you are in the world, I hope you are having an awesome day. I just want to make a quick video about why Toyota could still win 2023 Le Mans and WEC again in the new hypercar era. For starters, Toyota's history of enduro racing at Le Mans had ups and downs in the past years, even decades ago. The number one Japanese mark has shown European manufacturers and teams around the world how they've managed back-to-back -back triumphs since 2018. Toyota adopts as the number two Japanese car maker to earn victory at the 24 hours of Le Mans, and number one was Mazda, which only won Le Mans one time in 1991. Then it wasn't until 27 years later that eventually Toyota made it to the top at Le Mans and stole the unbeatable crown from the big names of Porsche and Audi. Toyota's Le Mans history dates back to the 1980s when the Group C era was born and very popular, and since 2018, Toyota continues its winning streak at Le Mans up until 2022 with 5 straight victories in 4 years. However, anything can change in the blink of an eye this year, and since this year's competition is so huge and diverse of new manufacturers, they will challenge Toyota for its money. However, Toyota's 5 streak Le Mans wins have resulted in a controversial story, but still a significant success in the history books. So to justify Toyota might turn up their 6th streak in Le Mans and WEC again, it is because the Toyota Gazoo racing team is always building up new solutions for its resourceful technology in their race cars, and to achieve its goals. Unlike previous years, the 2023 WEC season welcomes several new factory competitors from Cadillac, Porsche, Peugeot, Ferrari, and many more that will compete against Toyota. As such, Toyota's goal is to stick to the winning lineup again with even stronger competition. It will force them to improve themselves and make the team and the GRO10 hypercar stronger. Thus, the Toyota team showed us they've updated the GRO10 for 2023 with some new changes made comparable to the 2021 and 22 versions. It seems to carry dive planes in the front to add more downforce, fresh new headlights, and cosmetic changes to the rear wing. A new replacement for the GR-010 is unlikely for now, given the fact Toyota will continue using the GR-010 for another year seems like a reasonable decision. Since 2021, the car won 10 of the 12 races it entered for the first two seasons of the hypercar class. As expected in the last four years, five wins puts Toyota as the fourth mark in the world behind Porsche, Audi, and Ferrari. Although Toyota raced against so many manufacturers who have won Le Mans in the past, however, Toyota's five triumphs and Le Mans still tell a somewhat incomplete story to some fans. Many don't know how significant those wins are relevant until we see how they do against the more substantial competition this time. In those wins since 2018, Toyota hasn't faced competition from other major factories but only privateers' entries in the LMP1 era. And since 2021, the opening of the new hypercar class only saw just small factory entries from Glickenhaus, Peugeot, and LP next to Toyota. So the billion dollar question is, has Toyota ever been better at Le Mans than any factory they have raced? Well, if we take a brief look at its past, Toyota never subsided away from the competition. They've raced with Porsche, Mercedes, Audi, Jaguar, Peugeot, Mazda, and Nissan over the past three decades. Toyota first debuted at Le Mans in 1985, and the fact that their cars can finish the 24-hour race consistently is a testimony to the solidity they built up over the last three decades. They deserve to be on the top of the podium. If we take a look back at the 1990s, here you see at the top is the TS-010 and the bottom is the TS-020. They're not as technically advanced as their modern day successors, but they were the pinnacle of motorsport in their days. The TS-010 was the first to demonstrate Toyota's first podium at Le Mans came in 1992 and finished second place. Since then, the 1999 TS-020 was a revolution and paved the way for the future LMP1 cars. The TS-020 GT1 carried extreme potential and was set to win Le Mans, but placed second when crisis hit it during the race. Toyota couldn't imagine they would need 26 years to score their first overall win. Then again, after 1999, Toyota had a 13-year absence. Toyota then returned in 2012 to the top of the field at Le Mans and the first inaugural season of WEC. They rivaled with factory Audi and Porsche for the next five years, and if you remember since 2012 up until today, Toyota is the only manufacturer that has stayed in Le Mans and WEC program for 10 straight years now going to 11. 
it goes to show Toyota maintained a lot with their four race cars, TS-030, TS-040, TS-050, and GR-010. However, I've noticed for a while that some fans have made questionable statements on the media like Toyota only started to win after Audi and Porsche left in 2017, or they won races without any competitors so what's the point? First of all, you forget that this isn't the first time that a manufacturer has dominated without factory competition, and also to say that Toyota had no competition at all is simply not true. Let's start with an example. In the early 2000s, Audi had factory entries against Bentley, Panos, Chrysler, and Cadillac, right? But after the year 2003, those factory entries disappeared, and there was only privateer Pescarolos until 2007, Pedro rivaled Audi, followed by Toyota's return in 2012, and Porsche in 2014. Audi still dominated the most out of all of them still, but Toyota isn't to blame for dominating WEC in recent years. Their cars were always fast, very reliable, and always relevant. Toyota collected non-stop podium finishes at Le Mans in 2013, 2014, 2016, and 2017. There were even world champions in the 2014 World Endurance Championship against Audi and Porsche and had the fastest reliable TS-040. Don't you remember in 2017, Toyota would have won Le Mans after leaving the majority of that race until only 5 minutes left to go and issues happen again? The Japanese mark pursues to show Europeans how very competent they've come and eventually they achieved victory. Now, let's see if this will be enough for 2023. While Toyota got the potential issues with their GR-010 down pat, the newcomers and returning big name manufacturers who are just returning to Le Mans and WEC will have to find issues during the races. Balance of performance will accommodate the cars, and most importantly, reliability will be a huge factor, and Toyota got that mostly covered, because duh, it's Toyota, and they have a stronger pace. If anything, we can presume that Toyota has a greater advantage to win this season again. The other factory teams will have to turn up with their new machinery, having a reliable car they understand well will be a real deal. All in all, we will have to watch and see if Toyota will take a defeat or earn another winning streak. Even though I will be rooting for other factory teams to contest for the victory, I have full respect for Toyota. Best of luck to them. If you're still here, thank you all so much for watching this video, I really very much appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like and hit the subscribe button to my YouTube channel. We are almost to 2,000 subscribers and we're trying to make that as soon as March hits. Peace out, stay safe, Chris the Radar, out.